Welcome to projection part one. What does it mean to project onto someone else and how to stop? In this video, I'm gonna start with a basic definition of what it means to project onto someone else. Then I'm gonna dive into an example to show you what it looks like. And then finally, I'll end with how to stop projecting onto someone else. Let's go. So what does it even mean to project onto someone? Well, usually when that language is used, we're talking about is projecting our own feelings or our own limiting beliefs onto another person. Oftentimes we project onto others that which we don't very much like in ourselves that which we judge as bad or wrong or not good enough, instead of owning those feelings that we might feel about ourselves, we project them onto someone else. Now, it can be benign as in the case of, say, a, a woman or a mother who's very fearful and afraid telling her daughter as she's walking out the door, be careful, take care of yourself. That's a form of projection. She's projecting her own fears about the world onto her daughter's experience. It can also be toxic, as in the case of a romantic relationship, for example, where one partner um, is a cheater or has cheated in the past and is believing that their partner is cheating on them just because they've had that experience before or because they do it themselves. That's a projection of this. And it can be toxic if it creates a situation where this one person who's feeling these feelings and projecting is trying to limit or control the other person. I actually get to see a lot of projection in the work that I do because I lead a lot of group programs. And one of the components of many of our group programs is masterminding. Now in a mastermind, we separate people into groups and we allow people to work with each other. And so one of the things that I'll find in the masterminds is we have to watch out for projection where, for example, if somebody has an idea of something they want to do and they put it out to the group, someone in the group might say, that's a terrible idea. And they might be saying that because they had an experience where it didn't work out. And so they're projecting that experience onto the other person and telling them, Hey, you shouldn't do that because it didn't work for me. Now it's very valid and valuable for somebody to share with you their own personal experience. It's very valuable for someone to say, Hey, that's a great idea. And here, let me share my experience with you as opposed to don't do it. That won't work. Right? So when we're projecting onto someone else, we're not taking into account that they're a different person and they might have a different experience than we might've had. Another way that projection shows up in that type of scenario is where someone will tell somebody, Hey, you should do this. So let's pretend for example, we're in another mastermind and one person is looking for creative ways to market and promote their business. And another person in the group says, I know what you should do. You should do YouTube videos because that's the best way to market right now. And that's what I did and it works. So you should do it too. Now that's a projection also because they're not taking into account that other person's skills and gifts. Maybe that other person has other skills and gifts that come more naturally to them. Maybe they hate video. Maybe they don't like the technology. Now I'm not saying that someone can't learn that or you can't work around those things. I'm just using this as an example of what it looks like to project onto someone else. Another thing that we often project is our past into our future. When we project the past into the future, what we're basically saying, what the underlying belief is, is that there's no difference between then and now. And that may or may not be true. I mean, I like to tell people the past does not equal the future and to be very, very careful about projecting the past into the future, because what ends up happening is you end up living the same experiences over and over and over again and creating patterns. So one thing that when we let go of projection, and I'll talk about that later and in another video is we stop freezing things into the present, meaning freezing the past and enforcing the present and the future to be just like the past. So here's an example of projection, one that I, it's a, it's a fictitious example, but it's a perfect kind of amalgam of what I often see in my coaching practice, helping entrepreneurs. And basically it's when they create a new product or service and they project onto their future audience, all the reasons that it's not going to work. Well, people don't like to buy stuff and people don't like to receive email marketing or people aren't going to want this thing that I've created when they project onto the person, their own fears 
about what they fear to be true rather than what actually is true. So I've actually been in situations in our masterminds where someone says, nobody's going to want this. Nobody's going to want to buy it. And I say, hold up. All right, let's see. And I'll go and I'll ask the people in the room, do you see this as valuable? Would you want to buy this? Is this something that would be interesting for you? And oftentimes there are people like, I would totally buy that. I would love this. And the person that was projecting those beliefs gets to see, wow, those beliefs aren't even true. And look at, I was about to throw in the towel and not do this amazing thing because I believed that other people wouldn't want it. By the way, before I get into how to stop projecting onto others, how to catch yourself in the act, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment below and maybe even share with me how you find yourself projecting onto other people. So how can you stop projecting your own stuff onto others? Well, the first thing is you've got to be aware that you're doing it. The awareness that you're projecting, but it, it also is a layer deeper. It's like being aware of what your own limiting beliefs even are. And by the way, if you're not even sure what a limiting belief is, or you don't know what yours are, I have a whole bunch of videos on how to identify your limiting beliefs and overcome them. So the first piece of not projecting is to just be aware of when you're projecting. And remember, we can project our fears, our beliefs onto others, and we can also project our past into the future or our past experiences onto others. So as you find yourself giving advice to people, notice where that advice is coming from. Ask yourself, is this universally true? Or is this a projection of an experience that I've had that may or may not be true to the person I'm giving advice to? Another situation where you might find yourself projecting and a very common situation is when you're angry or upset, especially angry or, or upset with the people that are closest to you in your life. What often happens is that we not only project our own past into our future, we project how other people have been in the past into the future. Now I know what I'm about to say may seem really challenging, but I invite you to consider trying this. We often freeze people. I use this term a lot. I used it earlier freeze people into certain ways of being based on how they were in the past. And when we do that, we don't give people permission to evolve and grow. So like, let's say our mother was an absent mother and she wasn't very present, but over the last few years, she's really tried to change, but we're still harboring that resentment of how she was when we were a little kid. We might project that onto her now. You never cared about me. You never take care of me. You never give me time and attention, right? Well, that's the little five-year-old version of us talking. It may not even be true anymore. So notice when you're upset, notice when you're resentful, when you're angry, and especially if you've carried these resentments over the course of years or even decades, chances are you're projecting and you're not only projecting onto that person, but probably other women figures in your life. Another area that you might find yourself projecting is in the area of intimate relationships. This is pretty common to catch a woman. Well, a, a very often a woman who's been burned in her life in an intimate relationship will project that onto her girlfriend. So, you know, you might have a woman who's having lunch with her best friend who's sharing with her about this new love interest that she has. And the one woman might say, oh, be careful. You know, you're moving so fast. You might not be, you can't trust men or something like that. So just notice and catch yourself when you're projecting and also maybe even start to notice when you find other people projecting onto you. Now I have a whole video about that. So we'll get into that later. The second thing is to take responsibility for your own experiences and your own emotions. And just notice when you're making your own experiences mean something in someone else's life. So a lot of times projection shows up as trying to help somebody be more careful or be cautious or steer people in a specific direction. You want to pay attention. One of the ways that projection shows up is where you feel the need to steer somebody or ultimately what it is is manipulation. Now we don't like to call it that, but when we're trying to move people in certain directions, like make our kids choose something or make our partner do something or act a certain way or say a certain thing. Oftentimes that's a form of projection. The third thing that you'll want to do is to get really comfortable with your own flaws. Someone who is really comfortable with themselves, someone who has 
dealt with their own issues, who's processing their own emotions, who's aware of their own limiting beliefs, who's doing the work and healing their past and letting go of old resentments, somebody who's okay with doing that, who's doing that work is generally less likely to project because they're willing to look inward. And a lot of times projection is what we do so that we don't have to look at ourselves. So the more that you can do the inner work to heal your own wounds, the less likely you are to project onto someone else. Now that you've learned about how to identify what projection is and whether or not you're doing it, how to stop, you might want to learn about what it looks like when someone else is projecting onto you and what to do about it. So I invite you to check out part two, how to tell if someone is projecting onto you and how to handle it.